Good morning and welcome to Wallace Presbyterian Church. And for those of you that are live streaming, we welcome you as well. Uh, and our announcements today, uh, I should say, is Happy Easter as well as we just have passed halfway the 50 days of, of Easter. So uh, we still have uh, more worship services to come in this Easter season. Today we are proud to have uh, as our visiting minister, uh, Reverend Jared Lowry, uh, and he is, uh, serves as our general presbyter and stated clerk of the Presbytery of Coastal Carolina. And prior to beginning that call in uh, October of 2018, he was pastor and uh, the it was pastor of the Community of Grace, which is a Presbyterian USA uh, church in Sandy, uh, Utah, for eight years. Uh, he was ordained in 2006 in the Presbytery of New Hope and is a graduate of Johnson C. Smith Theological Seminary in Atlanta. Uh, Reverend Lowry is married to Molly, and they have three children, and they live in Wilmington. Our Presbytery office is in Elizabethtown, so he does have a little drive, but time to meditate there and back. So, Jared, we, we, we really welcome you, uh, and many of us, or some of us, have met him in Presbytery meetings and when we were having a disaster uh, assistance program when the uh, General Assembly, uh, our, our director from Louisville, came down. So uh, it's glad to see you and have you in our church today. Phil is on vacation, will be returning on Tuesday. Uh, so if there is an emergency, contact Cheryl Brinkley at the church office or clerk of session Hope Turnbull. Their numbers are listed. We won't have a Zoom Bible study Monday night uh, as usual, but we will resume that on Wednesday. Uh, it'll be on Acts 15, 1 through 18. And uh, Phil actually has put in here, did you know that the Bible describes a presbytery meeting? So if you want to learn more about that, you need to tune in. And if you haven't been on a Zoom meeting uh, the, in these Bible studies, they really are wonderful and, and exciting. So I encourage you to, uh, to check your, uh, for your invitation to Zoom meetings on our Bible studies and join in. Today we take up a Helping Hands food pantry offering, uh, and we're proud that we were able to receive an 1800 grant from the hunger program of the Presbytery of Coastal Carolina. The hunger program is supported by the offerings from different congregations, such as our quarterly path offering, which is the Presbyterian answer to hunger offering. And this grant will enable our food pantry workers to purchase needed supplies. So we thank the Presbytery for, for assisting us in this ministry. The beautiful flowers uh, in the sanctuary today uh, did not make the the, uh, the bulletin, but I wanted to give credit to the James and Olita Sutherland family, and uh, they're they're in memory of James and Olita and uh, their son Jimmy, uh, all former members of our church, and they're given by Erlene uh, Sutherland, Margaret Green, and Sue Jarman, the sisters uh, of Jimmy and the daughters of James and Olita. But the flowers are beautiful. Thank you, Erlene. Again, uh, in our community, there's a memorial service uh, at the Baptist Church on uh, Saturday for Ben Jessup, who uh, died from COVID, and they weren't, that was when churches were closed down. And uh, so you're invited to, to, to attend the First Baptist Church at 11 for his memorial service. And again, we're a reminder, we're taking up the Feed the Hungry Children backpack ministry today uh, so that Wayne won't get confused, you know, if you can earmark that uh, as, as money for the backpack ministry rather than our church uh, offering. And now I guess I'll read the opening sentences. <laughs> Welcome back, Dan. <laughs> read with me uh, this morning as we uh, read from the, uh, the opening sentences. We gather in the presence of God. We're grieved people. Here's the tears wiped away. 
We gather as little children of God to worship the one who provides what we need, not what we want. We gather around the table of God to taste the goodness of God, to drink deeply from God's mercy. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn of the morning is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. short of the glory of God, and that if we say that we have no sin, the truth is not in us, and we deceive only ourselves. So if we confess our sins, God, Scripture tells us, will indeed forgive us. So confidently let us go to God in prayer, confessing our sins together. Let us pray together our prayer of confession that is found in your bulletin in unison. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our failure to be what you have created us to be. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways and wasting your gifts and forgetting your love. By your loving mercy, Help us to live in your light and abide in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now let us silently confess to God. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Believe the good news and rejoice. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us sing our praises before God.
children's sermon this morning, and I'm always honored when he does. Um, I have to tell you that 20 years ago, when I came to this church for the first time, you had me at the children's sermon, because it is so meaningful for all of us. And today, we are going to be talking about, obviously, sheep and shepherds. Jesus is, has been, people tell us that Jesus is like a shepherd. Jesus leads us, and if we follow him, he never forgets us. He always knows us. He knows us by our name. And if one of us gets lost, he will come get us. If we wander away, he will come get us. Now, this is a, an important message for all of us because sometimes children wander away, sometimes grown-ups wander away from him, and sometimes some of us older grown-ups wander away from him. But he is always there to take us back. He is always there to help us find our way again. And this is a wonderful, wonderful promise. I, Bill, I think I forgot how to do the pictures, but oh, there we go. All right. So we have here um, two little lambs and a, sh and a sheep. You know, this when I taught elementary school, I taught many children who were learning about English. And they would learn the word sheep, and then suddenly w that word for lamb came up. Oh, no, what's a lamb? They, because we have names for grown-up animals, and we have names for small animals, but whether we are a lamb, a teenage sheep, a parent sheep, or as I said, an older sheep, we are all creatures of Jesus. And Jesus is like a good shepherd. He leads us, he shows us where the where we will be the safest and he keeps us safe and if anything comes toward us that will injure us he lets us know and helps us out and now i have a little poem that i found that i would like to read to you he made the stars and oceans blue but says that none compare with you you are his treasure and great prize he knows your name he made your eyes. He is your shepherd, little lamb, the king of heaven, the great I am. He is your shepherd, little lamb. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you that you watch out for us. We thank you that you are with us and that you guard us and show us the way. And we hope that we can follow you all of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Let us pray together as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from John, the 10th chapter, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. 
and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as my father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have the other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. May the Lord bless the hearing and reading of this scripture. Friends, I bring you greetings on behalf of your presbytery, uh, the Presbytery of Coastal Carolina and the 180-ish churches uh, that make up our glorious presbytery. I am Gerard Lowry, your general presbyter, your stated clerk here in this presbytery. And whenever I come and have the opportunity to, to meet and to preach uh, for our congregations, and let me say this is the first time in a year that I've had this opportunity, so thank you, thank you thank you for the invitation. Uh, uh, but whenever I come, I always make sure to first say a word of thanks. So thank you, Wallace Presbyterian Church. Thank you for the ways that you have been faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ for, for so many years, for all of your history. And thank you for the ways that you have supported the Presbytery of Coastal Carolina and the un other 179-ish churches as they seek to be faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ in their communities and as they discern the will and the spirit and the move of God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. One of the ways that you support and give to the Presbytery of Coastal Carolina is of course financially, and thank you for that, but also thank you for the, the, the best resource I think that we receive from our congregations is the resource of our people. Uh, the people of Wallace Presbyterian Church that faithfully serve on the committees and the commissions uh, of this presbytery. And so uh, thank you for those resources. Of course, uh, thanks for, for Phil for encouraging him to serve on the committees and commissions of presbytery. But, but Carol also serves on the East Steering Team. Uh, and Bill Butler, wherever he is, uh, our tech guru, where, where's, where's Bill? Oh, he's in the back. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, the presbytery meetings that we have had would not have gone uh, as smoothly as they did if you did not lend us uh, Bill Butler. So thank you for that. And Kurt uh, serves on the AC of uh, Tichi. Uh, and Zach has served with, with our youth. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us turn our attention to today's scripture lesson. Jesus, the good shepherd. Jesus, the good shepherd. Some of us may remember a commercial from the 1980s or the 1990s with the slogan, Be Like Mike. Of course, they were talking about being like Michael Jordan, the basketball player who grew up in our own backyards here in southeastern North Carolina and went on to lead the Chicago Bulls to six NBA championships. I remember that commercial. I can even hear the tune of the kids singing like Mike if I could be like Mike, I want to be, I want to be like Mike. Just me? No? Okay. <laughs> but I don't remember what they were selling. Now, maybe they were selling shoes. But the commercial was clearly encouraging folk that wanted to be like Michael Jordan to do things that Michael Jordan does or to wear what Michael Jordan would wear. 
And I guess that commercial was just playing on our human nature because as humans, we are imitators. Little kids, they wear the clothes of their parents and they walk around with their small feet in big shoes, imagining and imitating what they think their parents do at work all day. I'm sure you've heard people talk about keeping up with the Joneses, which means that we do what our neighbors have done, or we seek to do better than our neighbors have done. But as humans, we are imitators. Friends, if you hear nothing else from me today, hear this. I contend that there is no better model to imitate or to pattern our lives after than Jesus Christ. Like Christ, we should live like Christ. In our scripture lesson this morning, Jesus makes it abundantly clear that he is the good shepherd. And then he explains the the attitudes, the the qualities that are the difference between a good shepherd versus a hired hand. The good shepherd has complete and total investment into the well-being of the sheep, Jesus teaches us. And this is the opposite of the hired hand that runs away because he does not care about the livelihood of the sheep, or he cares more about securing his own safety than addressing the threats to the sheep. But Jesus explains that the good shepherd is so invested in the lives of the sheep that the good shepherd will direct all his power in pursuit of the wellness of the sheep, a power that even includes laying down his own life. Jesus' claim that no one can take his life is a powerful statement because we live in a world, as he did, where an individual's life can be snatched instantly. In the news just recently, we heard that nine were killed, seven fatally wounded when they went to work at a FedEx plant in Indianapolis last week. We heard weeks ago that eight were killed at an Asian American owned spa or massage parlor. They didn't offer their own lives. Their lives were taken in an instant. Breonna Taylor was in her own home when her life was taken. Dante Wright was driving. Ahmaud Arbery was was jogging. One of our own ruling elders commissioned to pastoral service at the Chinkapin Church was just one of a still growing number of those lives that have been taken by COVID-19 during this pandemic. This is the world that we live in. Here one minute, gone the next. And yet the good shepherd says, I have so much power that no one can take my life. And more importantly, I have so much love for my sheep that I would give my life if it's in the best interest of my sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd that cares for the well-being of the sheep. About this, there is no doubt nor question. However, the question that I do want you to wrestle with this morning is this. Who do I shepherd? And that may not even be correct grammar, but but I'm saying it like I mean it, and I'm sure you understand it. Who do You, shepherd, how do I, as a a follower of Christ, imitate Christ or pattern my own life in a way that I resemble the good shepherd instead of the hired hand? 
See, friends, I think the purpose of this text is indeed to remind us that Jesus is the good shepherd and that as followers of the good shepherd, we must pattern our lives as best we can after Christ. If we are following the shepherd, then surely we must act like the shepherd. So how do you, who do you shepherd? Wallace Presbyterian Church, who do you shepherd? Who do you care for? How do you care for the spiritual as well as the physical and emotional well-being of others? These are the questions I believe the followers of the Good Shepherd should consider as we read this text. These are the questions those that seek to pattern their life after Christ must ask of themselves. Now someone may be thinking to themselves, Preacher, I, I like the idea of following Christ. I like the idea of modeling my life after Christ, but surely, surely you're not saying that I have to offer my own life the way Christ offered his when he was crucified. To that I say, I'm not going to ask you to risk your life for someone the way the good shepherd promises to. However, I do wonder if you would risk your free time. Would you risk your free time to attend to the needs of a stranger the way I believe the good shepherd would? Would you risk your social status to address the hardships and injustices heaped upon a marginalized community the way I believe the good shepherd would? Would you risk facing rejection to share the love of God in Jesus Christ with someone who may not want it, who may not want to hear it, or who might not want to hear it from you. Friends, how do you pattern your life? How do you model your life after the life of the Good Shepherd? Like Christ, we should live like Christ. Now, scriptures tell us how Jesus lived. Scriptures tell us that during Jesus' earthly life, he would search for those that were overlooked and ignored, like the widow who gives her last in the temple. Scripture tells us that Jesus, during his earthly life, assured a, a convicted thief on the cross that God's love is wide enough for even him, and that salvation is not man's to determine. Scripture tells us that Jesus fed thousands that were hungry. He wept with communities that gathered to mourn, and he was not ashamed to be seen in public with outcasts. Scripture tells us that Jesus attended to the physical well-being of the sick. That he turned over tables to address systems that took advantage of the poor. That he spoke peace to those so scared that they locked themselves in an upper room. And that he showed his wounds to Thomas, proving that even the righteous and the faithful have scars. See, friends, I'm convinced that all of these and more are examples for those of us that claim to follow Christ. Do this in remembrance of me. It means more than just break bread and drink juice. But I think Jesus means that if we are to follow the good shepherd, then we have to model our lives after his life. Jesus is the good shepherd. And we, the siblings of Christ, are to be imitators of Christ. 
shepherds in the image of that good shepherd. The hired hand is like the good shepherd. As long as caring for those sheep and those people are in the best interests of the hired hand. But shepherds, in the image of the good shepherd, must be willing to face discomfort for the sake of the good shepherd's sheep. So again, I ask, who do you shepherd? As you ponder this question, I want to now leave you with two images. And I'm elated that I've got a little amen corner over here somewhere. (laughs) But think of these two images, would you? The first is a quote. It's from Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi was a Hindu activist in India. And he once shared that he studied Christ. I like this man, Jesus Christ, he said, but I do not like Christians because they are so unlike their Christ. It seems to me that Gandhi ran into far too many encounters with hired hands, followers of Christ that cared more about their own well-being and fail to truly imitate the Good Shepherd. Second image is actually a cartoon that I saw on Facebook. The cartoon shows a man that owns a business, and this man is in conversation with Jesus over coffee. And the man tells Jesus that he plans to plaster all over his work trucks crosses and scriptures to let people know that he is a Christian and that his business stands on Christian principles. In the cartoon, Jesus hears him. He takes a sip of his coffee and he says to the man, how about you don't? And see if people notice based on the way that you live. Who do you shepherd? Friends, today I'm challenging you to be someone's shepherd. I'm challenging you to pattern your life in the image of the good shepherd. I believe that you may be the glimmer of grace that helps someone endure the hardships of life that they are facing on that day. You may be the shelter that someone needs in the storm. You may be the whisper about God's unconditional love in the ear of someone who thinks of themselves as unlovable by anyone or anything. You be the shepherd. You be the shepherd who points others to the good shepherd. I believe that we are all here because there was someone in our lives that was like a shepherd to us. Someone shared with us the good news of Christ. Who was that shepherd for you? And more importantly, who will you shepherd? May we as followers of Christ be like shepherds, modeling our lives after that of the Good Shepherd. Let us pray together. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far along the way, God, it was by your might that we've been led to your light. So keep us forever in your path, we pray. Oh, Lord, you know the challenges that we face. 
Well, Lord, you know the challenges we face to be your faithful disciples. Some of these challenges are real, and they may endanger our very lives. But, oh, Lord, some of these challenges are only in our minds. But still, they hold us back from following you. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to be your faithful disciples. Help us to see that following you is about more than just the assurance of eternal life. But, O oh Lord, in our living, may we be your faithful disciples. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, as we gather on this day for worship, we do not leave our concerns at the door, but we bring those concerns of our hearts into worship, knowing that there is an opportunity like this before us where we can bring our concerns to our God and also be in prayer with and for our neighbors. I'm not sure how you all would typically do the pastoral prayer, since this is my first time with you, and I will take full advantage of doing it wrong. <laughs> so what I will invite us to do during this time of a pastoral prayer is I will lead us in what's called a, a bidding prayer. A bidding prayer is an opportunity just to call out and name those concerns that are on our heart. There's no pressure to do it. Please just offer a name. We don't need a full explanation of what's going on in the individual's life. But, but as I invite you to a time of prayer, I also give you space to just name those prayer concerns that are on your hearts and minds and know that as you offer those prayer concerns, not only are you praying for this individual that is on your heart and mind, but collectively, Together, let us pray for those that are named and those that are naming the individuals that they are praying for. So I invite you now to pause for a moment first of silent prayer, and then let me lead you into a time of prayer where we may share our prayer concerns with our God and with one another. Let us silently pray together. Gracious and loving God, we indeed come to you on this day. O oh Lord, we bring to you the concerns of those on our hearts and minds, the concerns of those in our community, the concerns of those in our world. O oh Lord, we share these individuals with you, the names of these individuals, not because we believe that you are unaware of their issues, but O oh Lord, it reminds us that you indeed hear our every prayer. It reminds us that you indeed are with these individuals, the ways that you have been with us our entire lives. And so, Lord, hear us on this day as we come to you in prayer. Hear us, O Lord, as we name those individuals in our lives, as we name those nearest and dearest to us, as we offer them up to you in prayer. O Lord, hear us as we pray for... Oh, Lord, wrap your loving and protective arms around these and, and so many others. Oh, Lord, hear us as we pray. 
But also, O Lord, hear us even as we pray silently in our own hearts about issues and concerns that we just feel like we can't share out loud or even lift up amongst the believers in prayer. Lord, in these secret and private spaces, O Lord, we believe that you are with us. So walk with us. Let us see your presence in our lives, even in those places that we try to hide from one another, in those places that we even try to hide from you. But, O Lord, allow us to see glimmers of your grace, hints of your love, in those secret, out-of-the-way places of our hearts. Hear us, O Lord. And now hear us, O Lord, even as we pray the prayer that your Son... And our Savior taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. (laughs) Friends, we have an opportunity at this time to give back a portion of that which God has blessed us with, our tithes and our offerings. Uh, I believe that there are collection plates in the sanctuary that you would have placed your offering in. If you are joining us online, I encourage you to give and support the ministries of Wallace Presbyterian Church uh, in the ways that are familiar to you. I also understand that there's a place on your website uh, that they can, uh, you can give. And if you are joining us or a member, an active member of another church, we encourage you to give to support the ministries of your congregation. But at this time, let us give with a cheerful and a joyful heart.
let us pray. O Lord, for these many gifts, we give you thanks. We ask, O Lord, that they will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that the world may know that they are loved by Wallace Presbyterian Church, but that the world may also know of the love that you, Jesus Christ, have for all. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand together, let us say what we believe by affirming our faith. Uh, words from the Confession of 1967 are found in your bulletin. Let us read responsibly. The life, the death, the resurrection, and the promised coming of Jesus Christ have set the pattern for the church's mission. We believe Christ's human life involves the church in the common life of all people. His service to men and women commits the church to work for every form of human well-being. His suffering makes the church sensitive to all human suffering so that it sees the face of Christ in the faces of persons in every kind of need. Christ's crucifixion discloses to the church God's judgment on the inhumanity that marks human relations and the awful consequences of the church's own complicity in injustice. We believe in the power of the risen Christ and the hope of his coming. The church sees the promise of God's renewal of human life in society and of God's victory over all wrong. The church follows this pattern in the form of its life and in the method of its action. So to live and serve is to confess Christ as Lord. Let us now sing our closing hymn, hymn number 803, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. Let me just say, um, you all have a gifted musician. Beautiful, beautiful music today. Thank you, Vera. Um, 
Friends, it is indeed a joy and a pleasure. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I hope I didn't do uh, too much damage, uh, but I think part of the reason that uh, Phil asked me to come is so that you all will be elated to have him back, right? <laughs> Uh, he had messed up so much. Uh, Phil, we're glad you're all fake. No, um, I pray that Phil is indeed enjoying his uh, time away. And again, I thank you for the opportunity to be with you on this Sunday. Here, let us hear now the benediction. Friends, as we go out into the world, remember that we follow the Good Shepherd. May we seek to pattern our lives, all that we do, all that we say after the Good Shepherd. May we indeed be a shepherd to others the way that Christ continues to be a shepherd to us. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore, world without end. Amen.